Hey, what's going on, you guys? Welcome back to another episode with I Trek. Big shout out to everybody that's been tapping in, man. I do appreciate each and every one of you guys. If this is your first time here, what we like to do is take a look at the most interesting and creepy TikToks and kind of evaluate for ourselves whether these are fact or fake. If you haven't already, go ahead and smash that like button for me. Smash that subscribe button and join the iTrack fam. And without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. Ever notice how you're always at the center of a rainbow? Like you never see the end of one like this, but it's always just out there in the distance somehow. This is because the center of a rainbow is your head's shadow. That's why there are never any colors in the middle of a rainbow. It's why you're always in the center because no matter where you go, the angle of your head's shadow goes with you. You're also responsible for the shape of the rainbow. How close you are to the ground determines the shape of the rainbow you see. Most of us think that a rainbow looks like this, just like one giant arch, but in reality, rainbows are actually full circles and the higher you go the more of the rainbow you see full rainbows are so rare that they actually have their own name it's called a pilot's glory and it's called that because you usually have to be at the height of a pilot in order to see one <laughs> well she made that quite clear there's no gold at the end of that rainbow oh my goodness look at that what the hell boy that should look like a portal no that should look like a poor toe that is a, that is crazy. It looks like a rip in the sky, boy. Y'all see that? Look at that. What the heck is going on? What the heck is going on? Look at that sun. That thing is huge. It looks so big. Wow. Michael Jordan being Aquarius. I didn't know he was an Aquarius. Well, of course he's an Aquarius. He always marries women outside his race. <laughs> Don't Aquariuses like women outside their race, sir? Oh, I'm an Aquarius. Uh huh. And you have someone who's outside your race. So you have to understand the thing about Aquariuses is they're always rebels. So if uh, an Aquarius is born within Christianity, it will rebel against the church. Mm -hmm. If an uh, Aquarius is born in a mosque, it will rebel against Islam. It's always about rebellion, no matter what they're in. One of the ways they rebel is they want someone outside their race. It's what they're attracted to. Michael Jordan has always been with a woman outside his race. 217. Nike became Nike 1975. You're the cat. That's when the name Nike came. Nike made a deal with Michael Jordan. Born 1963, you're the cat. They made billions together. People following their own energy. We talked about snakes and pigs being enemy signs. Who fired Candace? Then born the year of the pig, 1983. Fires Candace, born 1989, year of the snake. Always goes back. The numerology and astrology. Always. The pig and snake are enemies. Candace and Ben are enemies. I know some Aquarius might have just got triggered, but remember, it's just entertainment until it's not. You literally can't be in debt. You can't have a student loan debt. You can't have mortgage debt. You can't have tax debt because there's Damn. no money to owe. If you, if you could understand, if people understood just that simple part right there. How is there anything to owe? Because I used my social in that consumer credit transaction anyway. And according to 15 U.S.C. 1602I, it actually tell you in any consumer credit transaction, the actual natural person is the one extending the credit. And we know businesses aren't natural people because they know that everything was given to us from God. Again, this is trust law. Yeah. So they gave us this trust, this social to actually pay for everything. But how slavery works. You know, because you pay for everything when you give them your social. You know, now how slavery works is, well, let's not tell them that everything is paid off, but let them go work a nine to five job slave and still go and double dip and pay us again a second time around for something that was paid off the moment you gave me your social. But that's how they keep everyone trapped in the matrix, because if everyone in the matrix knew that everything was already paid, the whole world would be different. We would, we, who would be working a job? For what? For why? Everything's already paid for. You know, so, and, and that would mean, that would mean that we, the people have more time for ourselves, for our family to think, to operate, 
And that's exactly what this system doesn't want you to do. Right. right? You know what I'm saying? They we, have to keep Because we would distracted. have the time and energy and there resources to build a new parallel. Have you ever just sat and thought about what would the world be like if nobody worked? Uh, it'd be a lot of people with a lot of idle time. And, and, and I don't know. Might be a good thing. Might be a bad thing. Who knows? Let me know what you think. So apparently these 10 days were wiped from history. We're going to find out if that's true. Damn our calendars aren't perfect, which is why once in a while we need to make adjustments such as leap years. The story goes that this calendar drift was getting so real back in the 1500s that they were having trouble determining what day Easter should be on. So Pope Gregory the 13th implemented the Gregorian calendar back in 1582, which was 10 days off from the previous date. And they waited until October to avoid skipping any major Christian festivals in which October 4th became October 15th. And the funny part is that other countries actually didn't agree to this change and refused to adopt a new calendar. And so for the next 170 years, traveling across the border into a Catholic country meant traveling into the future by 10 days. We were time traveling before we knew it. Oh, and well, there you have it. 10 days missing in October 1582. It's true. Physics. That was your job. You were working on that. The science was something we were trying to figure out, but we knew how the devices would operate. You know, for instance, the propulsion of the craft. Everything that we have, whether it's a propeller plane or a jet or a rocket, it throws something out the back, either high-speed exhaust or a large volume of air. It's an action-reaction force. The action is you throw something out the back, and it moves you forward. That's how everything works. This is the first time there's a craft that's it's a reactionless craft. It's a field propulsion craft. And what it does is it creates a distortion in space and time in front of it, where space actually bends. It's just technology that doesn't exist yet. I mean, you're talking about uh, that there is... Science doesn't even know what gravity is, much less how to produce it or control it. And here is a device that's producing it and controlling it. Put a bowling ball in the middle of your bed, and then a foot in front of it, take your fist and push down on the mattress. Bowling ball will roll towards it. And that's exactly how the craft works. It creates a distortion right in front of it, and the craft falls forward. There, so there's a different physics that we're not... Well, the science that explains how the technology works. I mean, it's all encompassed as one thing, alien technology and science. What is the big picture? What are the What is the takeaway of your story after you're gone? You're not a, a rebel kid with a, with a jet car at Los Alamos today. Today's a different... Bob Lazar, right? Right. What have we learned? What's what's the message of your story? What's the big thing is the suppression of extremely advanced technology and the suppression of unknown science. That's Picture stars are called movie stars because in the Bible, stars were referred to as lesser illuminaries. So these lesser illuminaries are working for the big Illuminati. So most the big Illuminati are using the lesser Illuminati. The lesser illuminaries are just stars. Now we, we have pictures with, with the president uh, with his hand stretched out holding a, a red, road, a red rose. rose. And I have about 15 major color pictures of communist leaders throughout the world uh, holding a red rose in their hand. And these are from newspapers and magazines. Uh, I began to pick up on this because someone uh, alerted me to it, that the symbol of the red rose in, implies not only socialism and communism, but a secret society operating behind socialism and communism. Well, we find, uses the red uh, rose. This way out Willie holding the rose, we find right. Khrushchev, we find uh, all the communist, Brezhnev, leaders, all the communist leaders, and then we find the President of the United States over in his early years uh, leading anti-American demonstrations in the Soviet Union. Well, I know, but I'm saying that it, it's, it's not enough to say these things. You really must show the pictures so that people will see that what we're talking about here are symbols and emblems. Well, yes. even Hitler used uh, red and black, didn't he? Yes, so, uh, yeah, see, that's that's pretty much where I'm at. It's like it's cool to hear something, but when somebody can show you proof and then you can make the decision on your own, that's a lot better. UFO chief, the chairman of Harvard's astronomy department as well, both releasing a report on Tuesday where they wrote an artificial interstellar object could potentially be a parent craft that releases many small probes during its close passage to Earth. What the hell is it? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, that's for real. Oh, my God. What the hell is that? You see that? You guys know what that is? It's a UFO. 
All right, so that was just a peek, that was a preview, but there's a bunch of new videos, new types of UFO sightings being captured all around the world, and they're freaking people out. They're all new from 2024. You probably haven't seen most of these, so stick around. Maybe there's a simple explanation, or maybe we're just doomed as a species. Hopefully not. Get ready to be blown away. These videos are nuts. A man in Oklahoma is sky watching during the day and begins to panic as he sees a strange orb in the sky. Take a look. It's back. Okay, that thing, whatever the hell it is, came down really low. It was right over my head, it's like, but it's feet. What the hell is that? Mean? Oh my God. Judging by the fact he says it's back, I would assume he's seen something of this nature before. <laughs> That's how I sound every time the IRS comes knocking. It's back. Every time my mother-in-law stops by. It's back. Every time that I hook up with that exotic dancer and wake up the next morning. It's back. I'm kidding. I'm that was We all agree that there were people here before Adam and Eve, right? Unless it's your belief that brothers and sisters made it to populate the entire globe. Because obviously, if Adam and Eve were the only people, then their children would have to make babies with their other children. That doesn't work for many reasons, but for the commonsensical one, empirical evidence points to the fact that incest creates developmental issues for the babies born of incest. And the less known but easily as substantial proof that it wasn't just Adam and Eve is the fact that after Cain kills his brother Abel and is banished from the garden, he tells God that he's afraid that somebody else is going to kill him. And God tells him that anybody that attempts to kill Cain will be cursed seven times what Cain is cursed for killing his brother Abel. So if it's just Cain, Adam, and Eve, and Cain has been banished from the garden and only his parents Adam and Eve are left, who is he afraid of at all? Because most Christians have been deceived into believing that the canonical texts are the whole truth and nothing but the truth, many never go seeking answers outside of the Bible. But in the book of Enoch, our questions are even further substantiated by the fact that the fallen angels only come to earth to mate with human women. What women would there be to mate with if Eve hasn't even been created yet? Remember, Lucifer is disguised as a serpent in the garden in Genesis chapter 3. But the fall of the angels, according to the book of Enoch, makes the most sense chronologically in Genesis chapter 1. Meaning, the angels fell and mated with human women prior to the creation of Adam and Eve. It's also important to remember that the fallen angels are the god of the earth. In the canonical text, we are told that the God in us is far greater than the God of this world. So if the true God is not the God of this world and is actually the God that lives in us, who is the God of this world? Like I said, the fallen angel, the Elohim. Let me show you. Bind them fast for 70 generations in the valleys of the earth till the day of their judgment and of their consummation. Let's break that down. First, for context, the fallen angels are being judged and condemned for four specific reasons. First, for mating with human women. Second, for teaching forbidden knowledge, including astrology, cosmetics, and magic. Almost as if to suggest that these were heavenly practices. But anyways. 
Third, corruption and violence in the earth. And fourth, rebellion against divine order. Remember, the Hebrew, the word Elohim, which is used as the English word for God, means God, plural, gods. Anytime you see an angel in the text, it is a fallen angel, meaning it's a demon. It's even in the word. Angel, Michael, Gabrielle. If the fallen angels are the god of this world, there were people already here. Who did the fallen angels create in their image and likeness? Well, in Genesis, we learned that darkness always was and light had to be created. In Enoch, we learned that Noah was an albino that resembled the angels. But anyways. You could tell she's been doing some homework, so you definitely should go do yours. Hey, fool. Hey, no, no. <laughs> From the flashlight, I don't get it. I don't get it either. How am I just seeing Put it back. Circle? How are we seeing the shadow of the tree from the flashlight when it's the sky behind the tree. Hey, you could act like you wouldn't hire a robot to do all the dirty work if you want to, but it just makes a lot of sense. And watching this clip, it just hits me hard. There's going to be companies that own these robots and you're going to be able to rent them out for their time. Or for like 20k, you just go buy your own. That's genius. I'll settle, I'll just be single. My mom's single, my mom's been single, my mom raised me single, so I'll just stay single. By the way, that's a very genetic trait. <laughs> That's true. There, there's a book called. Uh, there, there, there's a book Be called. Single. No, no, it is. Be, no, no. How, how picky you are. There's a book by Barry Schwartz, one of my mentors. He's a professor. It's called The Paradox of Choice. People get f***ed up when they think they have too much choice, but nobody has as much choice as you think. But it's genetic. Some people that he calls them maximizers or satisficers. Maximizers are always looking for better, and they're not gonna settle till they find the best. Satisficers realize time is short, and so it's like you gotta marry something, especially for. Getting giving birth to babies like for men and women you gotta pop them out because nature don't give a shit about culture yeah some people do say dating is like a casino and you should probably leave the casino while you're up because if you stay in there too long you'll crap out and leave with nothing and that's called dying alone the last bone in your cat's toes are completely amputated and removed if you want them declawed. Then the tendons and ligaments are also severed, removing the claw completely. As they heal, cats experience intense pain as they learn to walk with amputated toes. They struggle with balance, jumping, and walking, which can lead to long-term mobility issues. And even once they're completely healed, your cat might have chronic pain and arthritis. Hey, hey, that's just as bad as being neutered. It's like 
You're taking this whole defense mechanism away. Crazy. This is like the craziest shit. Um, hold on. The sky went black. There was one gust of wind. This does not even do it justice. The sky is on fire orange. Oh my God. <gasps> this is the craziest storm I've ever been in. Um, this is, I've never seen anything like that before. I need to rewatch this later. I'm just gonna keep going. We got 30 more seconds, y'all. Same. Wow, incredible. This would be an eerie sight, especially out at sea. I heard that once you skydive, okay. you can't feel or like life becomes really mundane. And even the things that used to be exciting aren't exciting anymore because you'll never get the thrill of that skydiving experience. I'm keeping it short and yes, she's right. This is called post adrenaline blues. After skydiving or any other super exciting behavior, there's this rush in adrenaline and dopamine in your body. It's also super stimulating and addictive. And now your body's dopamine and adrenaline baseline levels has shifted. And when this high wears off, normal activities can seem dull. I'm gonna need all my skydivers to let me know if that's a fact. I always flirted with the idea of skydiving, but uh, I'm not sure it's for me. But let me know, is, is that a thing? Is everything else boring after that? They told us that we are never ever to fly over that hole and we are never to discuss it again. What is that about? And does that have anything to do with all these other pieces that keep emerging? That there might be something archaeological in Antarctica. According to ancient astronaut theorists, this was not the first time a massive hole has been spotted in the ice of Antarctica. Famous polar explorer Admiral Richard Byrd allegedly reported seeing a massive entrance to an underground world during his 1947 expedition to the South Pole. Admiral Byrd made a lot of unusual statements, allegedly talking about a large opening at the South Pole that went deep inside the Earth, ice-free, and was inhabited by various sorts of aliens. This was the real-life Truman Show. During the 1950s, a man named Chad Powers was a TV producer who had his own show called Sunnyville, where he played a fictional mayor in a fake town. The whole town was made up of 30,000 actors with only five residents not knowing it was fake and that they were secretly being filmed on a TV show. The creepy part about the show was that all five contestants were put on the show unknowingly. They were all put into medically induced comas and flown out to Antarctica, where the show was being filmed in a 250 square mile metal dome. Everything inside the town was fake or imported from other parts of the world. Chad controlled everything in the town from the people to even the weather. But by the third season of the show, Chad started causing trouble by creating artificial natural disasters in the town for entertainment purposes, which led to the passing of over 200 actors. At this point, all the actors wanted to leave but couldn't, because they were stuck in a dome. The show also had no purpose anymore, because the five contestants were eventually told everything was fake by the actors. Chad was livid about this, and went on the town's news channel and told everyone that they all signed contracts and couldn't leave. This caused a revolt, and everyone went searching for Chad. A fellow producer named Ken Dahl, 
who was not happy with what Chad was doing, granted access to the rooftop of the dome where Chad was hiding, and the revolting actors were able to find Chad. When they confronted him, he begged, saying, It's just showbiz, my friends. Not happy with that response, the actors grabbed Chad and threw him off the top of the dome, and he was never seen again. Over the next few weeks, the town was fully evacuated and then demolished. Now I heard of the Truman Show, but if that's the backstory, that's wild as... It was horrible. This is the woman who lived in the House of Horrors with her three children before Zach Bagans bought it. Latoya Ammons fought back tears when she told us how they fled in terror after her daughter was raised right off her bed. She says the demon sounded like this. We've waited five months. It sounded like something dead. It's right out of the movie Poltergeist. He walked up the wall and did the backwards flip. How did everybody in the hospital react to your son walking up the wall? They took off and they ran. The uh, doctor from the psych ward said, that's not, that's, that's not real, that's not human. No human can do that. Speaking of deep, mysterious voices. You in there. While I'm involved in this conversation, the AM FM radio went to stack and turned up very loud. And it said, you in there. And the person on the phone say, what the hell was that? And I say, I don't know. What was your reaction? I was in shock. I don't think anything prepares you for watching a loved one being possessed, especially doing the things she said, walking up the walls and stuff. You'd probably lose it after that. Minnesota, is it really like that or is it cap? Let me know. This is the exact reason why I stay away from ground beef right now. Buddy decided to recycle a bunch of chicken skeletons and make chum bucket patties. And the scariest part is when this is all done, it look exactly like the ground beef that you and me eat. You will never be able to tell the difference. And you wonder why when they start testing the meat, they be having other types of meats. It's out of the ground beef. And the question that we all asking is, who the f is going to eat these bone burgers? These mother casket whoppers. A lot of y'all ass be eating the zoo. All different types of creatures, animals, and the parts that you're not supposed to be eating. Watching stuff like this really makes me tempted to go vegan. Them making my nigga Grim from Ben and Mindy into a whopper is absolutely diabolical. What you think you eating might not be what you really consume. This video of Ice Spice is going viral and it's a video of her during prayer. But just pay very close attention to what she does with her hands when they're done praying. Hands hold hands. Lord, thank you so much for bringing this amazing group together right now with this amazing stream and our amazing teams, Lord. We are all from the same place and we are all trying to get to the same place, which is the top end. We, are, we all want to experience different things in our lives, chat, so thank you so much for bringing all of us together, and I pray that you allow us to grow on other people, on each other, and I pray that you allow us to reach any measures in this life, and you just watch over us daily, you bless us, you allow us to bless other people with our work and our amazing craft, and you help us enjoy this night, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 This morning that some say may be proof we're not alone in the universe. A UFO in the form of a bright light is seen descending over the dome of the rock in Jerusalem. The video is said to be taken over the weekend. Uh, then suddenly the light shoots up into the sky. There you see it. Another video from a different angle uh, appears to show the light doing the same thing. Three got up a bit. He says they resembled extraterrestrials he's since seen in the movies. They were up like us. A new Harvard study suggested that aliens may be secretly living here on Earth. Well, according to our next guest, aliens are already a number of people that believe themselves to be extraterrestrials. Who we're locked in. What you're about to see. So that's going to be your aiming point. White settlement police say. And you're going to press arm. Will be a game changer. Three, two, one. A new tracking dart. Officers can launch from their patrol cars. 
and stick to the back of a suspect vehicle trying to get away. Now you can see it sticks and it's very difficult to get off. Officers then follow the car with GPS instead of chasing it. You go do your thing. We're going to cool off for a couple minutes, we'll let you cool off, and then we're going to come back on my time now. now well, you guys, hey, that's another one in the books. I appreciate you guys, as usual, for stopping by and watching another one with me. If you haven't already, go ahead and smash that like button for me. Smash that subscribe button and join the iTrack fam. And I will definitely catch you on the next one.